How's it going guys? For today's video we're going to do a comparison between a couple of gas grills. Uh, the one on my left we got the Weber Genesis 2 E210 and then over here on the right we got the Fuego Professional F24C. Um, they look completely different from one another as you can tell but they actually compare pretty nicely on paper because they're about the same size and the same price. So. But uh, throughout this video, we're going to uh, show you the differences, um, which one's a little bit better than another, and then um, which one's the best bang for your buck. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, let's talk about the setup. I ended up setting both of these grills up. Um, they weren't too difficult, but the Fuego over here took me about 25 minutes from start to finish. The setup was a breeze. It, the instructions were pretty easy. You know, I didn't have any issues as far as setup-wise. Um, for the Weber... It wasn't too difficult, but it was intimidating at first because of how many pieces there were. Um, it took me start to finish about an hour and 15 minutes. And I know most people aren't going to have to set the Weber up just because you can purchase them set up already. But in the event that you do, Weber is by far uh, took five times as long, you know, um, to set up. And um, I'm more uncertain most people can, but it, it is a little intimidating at first. Now let's talk about the design. Your Weber over here looks like your traditional barbecue. It's, you know, it's a square design. It's still a compact footprint for the size, but it's your normal barbecue grill. Uh, the Fuego over here kind of has the unique design that you don't see out there. You know, it's kind of like the R2-D2. It's, it's circular. Um, it's really compact and doesn't take up a lot of space. And with being so compact, it's easy to maneuver so you can literally turn it 360 without having you know without having to move much it just turns circular with a with the weber here it's not as compact um still being a compact grill you know the side shelf does come down um which then extends the footprint but it doesn't move as easily so if you're kind of in a tight space you know how much of a footprint it took up just to get it to turn around so this kind of might be an, a disadvantage uh, for most people um, with it being so compact over here with the fuego as you're going to notice there are no side shelves you got these metal handles here um, these metal handles make great for holding your utensils and things like that but fuego does sell a side shelf but it's an additional cost that just connects to the to these handles here and it gives you a little bit of storage space as you can see not much but it's enough to set something down but um this is an additional cost so just bear that in mind when when thinking about this if you wanting a side shelf another benefit to the design of these and in particular with the fuego with it being a dome design is it actually heats up a lot more evenly and quicker because this dome acts kind of like a parabolic reflector um, I wish more manufacturers would actually design uh, barbecue grills like this versus kind of like your traditional look that you see here. Um, I just don't, they don't heat, heat as evenly and as quickly as with a, a dome shaped grill. But um, let's talk about the actual lids because um, that's kind of a big difference. With the Fuego, it opens up at kind of like a 45 degree. And this is an added benefit because your arms stay away from the actual grill. So if you're cooking something hot and fast or you're having the temps all the way up, you're not having to reach over just because of this uh, 45 degrees. It kind of opens to the side. Um, with the Weber, it just opens your normal traditional way. But the advantage with this one here is it has a lot thicker um a lot thicker lid it's supposed to be an advantage it's supposed to trap heat and things like that but even though the fuego is a lot thinner i haven't had any issues as far as heat up or anything else like that it's not super thin but it is thinner than the weber but you would think that this would have an advantage to it as far as heat retention and things like that but throughout my testing this this didn't make a difference between the two which was kind of surprising to me Alright guys, let's let's look at the front of these grills now. Uh, both these grills are two burner grills. Uh, the only difference between the two is the, the burner designs obviously because of the way the shape are. But these knobs are extremely cheap. I was kind of disappointed on how cheap they were. And this price point, you'd think they'd put a decent quality knob on here. With the Fuego, there's only one knob, but depending on the direction will depend on if you have one burner or two burners off. But this is a solid metal knob, which I was actually extremely impressed with. It. It, you know I do like it um, one 
one advantage I guess the Weber has, well, I don't know necessarily if it's an advantage or not, but one feature that the Weber kind of touts is, is their infinity ignition here. It's supposed to guarantee delight, not give you any issues, things like that. But um, I'll go into some issues I have with it a little bit later on in this video. But um, they're saying it's a better ignition. I don't see the need for it. The Fuego has your basic one. They both are battery operated. I haven't had any troubles with lighting or anything like that. Um, if we move further down into the grill, Weber has this kind of unique design here where you're able to easily remove this grease cup here. Um, you just remove this down here and just pull it out. And I do like that they, they sell these little, uh, these little foil pan liners because it makes it easy to clean. The only thing I don't like about this is it's exposed to the elements. If you're going to keep this outside, you're not going to want your dogs or any of the critters coming in and getting into this stuff. So you're going to have to remove this every single time or throw out the foil pan, which can kind of get expensive. Uh, with the Fuego here, they have kind of a unique design, which I really do love. It's not exposed to the elements and it's really easy to clean. You just pull this tray out right here and you got this little uh, this uh, reflector here and you just remove this and you can easily clean your grill and it's not exposed to the elements where the critters can get into it here and then as far as propane storage with the Weber you got the storage on the side which extends the footprint but they have this unique feature built in where it kind of tells you uh, how much propane you have but it's not very accurate to be honest with you I don't know how well this is coming up, but I can lift this propane tank and get two different readings. So if you can see here, it's saying I'm all completely out of propane. But if I push it down and then lift it back up, you, say, you can see <laughs> I'm actually one above. So this isn't very accurate, to be honest with you. Uh, with this one, it's actually integrated into this body here. You got this uh, really nice clasp, and then you just open it up, and then it just kind of conceals right there and then you just connect your propane and then you just shut it which is a unique design and i really like it because it makes it compact all right guys let's talk about the cooking surface because that's kind of important here even though the weber does look bigger the fuego is actually uh bigger of the two um as you can see here this is actually has a lot of cooking space and it comes in at roughly i think about 525 square inches you got 415 for your main and then you got 110 for your warming rack uh, for the weber here we're coming at 494 you got 380 i believe at the at the bottom and 114 at the top um i guess one advantage or one feature that the weber does have over the fuego is uh this uh this uh, warming rack can actually come down you just lift it up and it just goes down um the fuego doesn't have that it's kind of integrated into the lid but i'll be honest with you guys out of all the years of cooking i've never once had to remove remove this rack over here and then if we're looking at the grates here you got a split design where you got two different grates where it makes it a little easier to handle between the two um, i've heard some people says it's easier to clean because you can stick in your dishwasher never once have i've ever stuck these in my dishwasher so to me it's you know it makes it easier to handle but it isn't a feature that i look for in a grill it is not one of those ones that make or break you got this massive cooking cooking a grate here which is pretty impressive this thing will actually weighs quite a bit i think it comes in at 18 pounds so this is a solid piece of metal um i think it's cast iron i believe and this is actually really great so but i'm gonna go ahead and take these uh grates off and uh we'll let's talk about the inside of the grill all right guys i went ahead and removed the grates from both of these grills here so let's look take a look on the inside uh on the inside of here we got i think five we got three of these porcelain enamel and i think they're these are stainless down below these flavorizer flame tamers whatever you call them uh they're porcelain enamel on the front three and uh they kind of serve a purpose as far as being able to evenly distribute the heat and then it actually protects the burners from getting clogged up with all the juices and fat running down um Web touts that uh, with being porcelain enamel that they're gonna last longer and I agree to a certain extent but they're still gonna eventually rust out and they're gonna need to be replaced also with having so many here it's just kind of a pain in the butt to clean just because of the design and then you have to scrub every one of them 
Um, that's not a Weber issue. That's kind of an all kind of barbecue grills that I've, I've encountered here. Uh, with the Fuego, you got a one piece design here, which is circular obviously because the burners are circular. Um, this makes it so much easier to clean just because I can take my brush and just wipe it over it. You can see it's a little dirty from uh, testing it. I gave it a quick clean before this video, but um, if this ever needs to be replaced, all you gotta replace is one piece, um, which is kind of nice. Um, let's talk about the burners here. You got, you got these burners here. Uh, the Fuego comes in at 26,500 BTUs and you got this circular design here. Um, depending on, on how you want it will, will depend on which direction um, you, uh, you light this up. So you go to the start and all the way up and down, obviously I got both burners on. It's really hard to tell. And then if I go one direction, only one of the burners stays on. If I go another, they both, you know. Uh, with the Weber, they're uh, independently controlled here. So you can see here, you just turn one on and it lights up and this one comes in i believe at 26,000 btus and i mentioned i had some issues with it and i'm still working through weber right now um they're saying i'm gonna have to replace the manifold which is a brand new grill which is kind of upsetting but um this one doesn't light up on its own in order for me to get it to light you can see that i've had this grill here i actually have to manually light it um you can see that because it won't light any other way so that's something that uh, quality control you know it's I'm not gonna ding Weber on that it could happen to pretty much anybody but it's just unfortunate it happened to this one um, with being a circular design and having a little bit more BTUs uh, Fuego claims that you can get this grill all the way up to 500 degrees in five minutes uh, it took me about six minutes, six and a half. Um, it was about 55 degrees when I tested it, I'm, depending on sea level and things like that. So it's pretty close to what they're claiming to be. And the hottest uh, this grill gets is 650 degrees according to Fuego. I was only able to get it up to 625, which 25 degrees isn't too bad. With this one here, um, the hottest I was able to get this grill was 490 degrees and after about a half hour I got it pretty darn close to 500 and then I just stopped just because it wasn't it peaked out at 490 and then it kind of creeped up just ever so lightly but I got tired of wasting propane after a half hour so the huge advantage goes to the Fuego here because if you want to cook something quick and easy I mean you, this is gonna heat up real quick you're able to cook faster you able to get your meals done by the time this one gets heated up so the winner goes to the fuego when it comes to the burners all right well I'm gonna go ahead and address something that I know is gonna come up in the comments because it comes up on every one of my videos can you convert these to natural gas the answer is yes with the fuego and no with the Weber with the Weber you're if you try to convert this to natural gas and it's a propane then you will void the warranty so you're gonna have to buy a whole new grill um, if you want to convert it to natural gas or natural gas to, to propane. With the Fuego, they do sell a kit and it's just a couple of horses, orifices that you swap out and then they give you a hose. And I'll make sure I'll go ahead and put the link down below. And now that we're still, you know, we're talking about the burners and the design, um, let's talk about the indirect and direct cooking. The advantage goes to the Fuego here because with uh, if you're trying to cook indirect, um, you can do that with, with both of them, but the only, only thing you have to do is you have to light one of them and not light the other, then put your meat right here. Well, the only disadvantage with that is, is you have to keep rotating your meat because the heat source is coming from one side. With the Fuego, I can actually turn off the middle burner and keep the outer burner going. And what it does is it heats your meat and cooks it indirectly all around in the circular design, which is a huge plus. It just cooks a lot more evenly. So that's the advantage with having these circular burners. And then if we're looking down, you know, as far as this grease, you got this big, huge gaping hole where it allows all your drippings and everything else like that. And with the, with the um, Weber, it, it removes for easy cleaning, which is a huge benefit. Um, the Fuego has the same thing, you know, there's nothing blocking it so it makes everything fall down below and you can see once we remove it there that, you know, we can easily clean it. Alright guys, I went ahead and put all, all, all the grates and flavorizer bars and everything back in. Um, I forgot to mention earlier that uh, 
my testing I've tested both of these grills with thermometers and um, trying to figure out all the hot spots on it and then I went ahead and did a bread test on both of these and um, I didn't show it in this video because I'm trying to keep this as short as possible but when I did the bread test to see how evenly it cooked all I did was crank it up I put white bread on here so I could see where the hot spots were and on this particular grill all the hot spots were right here kind of like an L shaped the center just completely burnt the toast here but these two corners the the bread wasn't even cooked at all i mean there was a light toast which was kind of surprised me when i was speaking to weber on the phone they said that shouldn't have happened but um they can't explain why it did i did it a few times and i took temperature readings and and my results were the exact same with the fuego here i noticed uh, i didn't really have any hot spots the only hot spots i had which i knew uh we're gonna be we're just right here along these edges because this is just a solid piece of, of cast iron or, or a solid piece of grate so I figured these were gonna get hot so uh, my results showed that these did get hot here um, overall it was pretty even it was a little bit lighter but not by much in the center but I was pretty impressed with how even this uh, this was so when you're cooking with this I recommend doing a bread test on this um, you'll you, you'll probably get the same results as me so just be aware where you, you'll get a little bit hot right here along the edges so it isn't really a big deal just kind of avoid these or just kind of rotate your meat if you have quite a bit here so but um, I think I pretty much covered everything uh, in this video here um, I they both of them have a lot of accessories with, with with them I recommend getting a cover the Fuego has a really nice cover that fits uh, really nice here let me go ahead and get that on I'll get back with you guys all right, I went ahead and put the covers on both of these. As you can see, this goes down nicely. It covers the grill perfectly. Um, it's, it's a nice fit. It's not too snug. It's easy on, easy off. I've had these both outside, and it's rained a ton, and this uh, cover did fantastic. Um, cover's a little expensive, to be honest with you. I think they're about 40 bucks or so, um, but it's on par with most covers. You know, most covers range about 30 to $40 when it comes from the manufacturer. With the Weber cover, you're going to notice this isn't a Weber cover. And you're probably asking, well, why didn't I get the Weber cover? Well, I'm not spending $60 or $70, 60 or $70 on a freaking cover. You're, you're paying $20 bucks for the cover and then $40 for the name. You know, it's ridiculous. This one's an Amazon Basics cover. I think this was like 25 bucks, 20 bucks, somewhere around there. And it fits perfectly. You know, and I've had, like I said, both of these grills out in the rain and they worked excellent. So... Um, as far as any other accessories, one thing I'm really excited about is the Fuego actually has a cast iron griddle that covers the entire cooking surface. And I'm really excited over that one. Um, they have it for their other models of grills and I, I contacted them and, and um, they told me it should be released in the late summer. So once it does uh, get released, I'm definitely going to be picking one of those up. And hopefully, you know, if everything works out, this is going to be my primary grill. Um, I'm real excited for it and we'll just have to see and I'll, I'll make an updated video on that but um, I think I covered everything in this video if I missed anything or you want me to elaborate some more go ahead and leave it down in the comments down below um, but overall if I had to choose between both of these grills I, I think I would choose the Fuego you know um, there's so many more advantages a smaller footprint better design heats up quicker um, there's just it it's I think it's an overall better grill but um, you guys can decide for yourself based on this video and all your guys other research so, so if you guys have any other questions concerns comments leave them down below thanks guys